Greetings folks. In this video I'm going to be talking about auxiliary channels and inputs and what different sorts of inputs can do or how they affect uh, auxiliary channels. Now to me auxiliary channels is a bit of an outmoded term. Uh, it sort of comes from or maybe quads or spectrum radios or old radios that a little bit locked down. This has been prompted by a viewer request from Bill, living legend. Uh, Bill says he hasn't been in RC since uh, uh, two channel radios. I have to admit my first radio only had two channels too. It was an old Futaba something or other. Uh, I bought it to control a uh, radio controlled land yacht and that's all I needed. Uh, but these days radios have uh, up to 16 channels or even more, 24 channels on the uh, Ethos and uh, the uh, X20 radios. Uh, but let's say 16 channels. Uh, now the idea of auxiliary channels is that the first four channels uh, in the past have been sort of set as add-on elevator throttle rudder or some different order. And then the next channel after that, channel five, was called auxiliary one. Uh, that to me is just confusing. These days um, I always refer to channels as one to 16, uh, one, two, three, four, and then five is just channel five. It's not an auxiliary channel. Now, Bill was interested in how each different sort of control uh, affects a channel. And basically, any input on the radio just sends a signal uh, from 1,000 um, microseconds up to 2,000 microseconds. And that is just sending the channel from one extreme to the other. Uh, and each of these inputs dials, switches, even logical switches or internal software switches. All they're doing is sending the channel from a low position to a high position or somewhere in between. I'll show you that in more detail. I'll show you a couple of uh, more basic radios as well to, to show kind of what the auxiliary channels is referring to. I have three different radios here, varying levels of programmability and um, adaptability, I guess. We'll start with the, the most basic, the Radio Master T8 Lite. Now, this is uh, a non programmable radio, has four channels for aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder. Also, has four switches there's switch A, which is a two position, switch B is three position, switch C, three position, and switch D, two position. Eight channel radio, four channels for the sticks, and one channel each for uh, the switches. And they are set, you can't change them, that's just the way they are. Fairly basic, but uh, still a useful radio. So that's locked down, and you could think of channels one, two, three, four, and then uh, channel five is the first auxiliary channel. Now, this radio is a little bit more complex. Flysky ST8, I think it is. What's it called? It's a Flysky radio. Uh, it is, again, it's eight channel, I think. And we have a few more things. We have uh, switches and dials and the usual four channels on the sticks as well. So if you go into the menu, go to the general menu, and if we scroll down, oh, we've got the monitor there. And uh, no, we'll go down to auxiliary channels. Click on auxiliary channels, see we've got channel 5, channel 6, channel 7, channel 8 and you get the chance to choose what is going to operate that channel. VRA is this variable resistor, VRB is this resistor here and then you can choose any of the switches as well. So this is channel 5, at the moment it's set for VRA, let's choose uh, switch A, this switch here, so now that switch is operating channel 5. All it's doing two position switch, all it's doing is it's sending it from one extreme to the other extreme on that channel. And you can see we have channel six is key two. We have uh, a couple of push button keys there, which again, they're just momentary switches. So that's uh, in the low position, push, that's a high position, let go back to the high, low position. I'll show you more about this on the other radio, which I, I actually have a receiver connected up to that one. Channel seven, variable resistor C, which is this dial up here uh, we've got also got another dial here so you can choose any of these inputs to operate channel 5 channel 6 channel 7 or channel 8 
so that's uh, nice and programmable. Now we come to the modern era, so-called, or what I think. Uh, this is a 16-channel radio running uh, OpenTX or EdgeTX operating system. And with these radios, they're, they're totally open. You can assign any input to any channel, including the first four channels. Let's have a look at the mixers here. So you've got the mixers. Uh, we've got channel one, two, three, four listed here. And we can actually choose whatever we want, edit, and we get the list of dozens and dozens of different inputs that we can choose to operate that channel. Let me just demonstrate some of them. Uh, so let's go down to, so instead of calling them auxiliary channel one, two, three, this is just straight channel five, six, seven. I've got on channel six. Uh, let's go and edit channel six. The, this is the source. This is where we get to choose what we're going to have operating the channel. Let's choose, say, this dial here. So let's change that to the S2 is the source. Hear the servo squeaking away there. Let's have a look at what it does now. So here I have uh, a receiver that is bound to this radio. So they're talking to each other. I have a servo plugged into channel 6 there. 5 volt battery chunk plugged in as well. So now you can see the dial just operates that channel in a continuous manner, just going from one extreme to the other and all points in between. Now, what if we change that to say uh, a two position switch? You can see two position switch, that's just switching the channel from one extreme to the other. So sending the signal 1000 microseconds, 2000 microseconds and the servo understands that and that's uh, moves into the appropriate position now if we go and change it to something else let's change it to the throttle stick maybe and again you can see the throttle stick is doing exactly the same thing as the other inputs just that it's in a different direction i suppose going from uh, zero throttle or 1000 microseconds to uh, full throttle or 2000 microseconds. Now we also have some uh, buttons on the top here. That's a momentary button there. So if we choose that as the input, you can see. So the button down gives 2000 microseconds, which is sort of full rotation to the right. And uh, when you let go, it's 1000 microseconds, which is full rotation to the left. This one here is a on off switch. Let's choose that one. So that stays depressed. 2000 microseconds, 1000 microseconds. Full deflection to the right, full deflection to the left. Choose a three position switch now, this one here. So here we've got 1000 microseconds, full to the left, 1500 microseconds, centered, 2000 microseconds, full to the right. And of course, you can uh, vary all of these things as well. You can slow them down, you can speed them up. Let's see, let's do that too. In this screen here, we can add, uh, say, some delay. Uh, for example, if this was a flap server, you could, you could slow the flap deployment down if you wanted to. So I've got two seconds slow up and two seconds slow down. And now you'll see the servo moves nice and slowly. So there's lots of stuff you can do here too. So I hope that clears it up a little bit. Uh, auxiliary channels and inputs. Inputs are just something that feeds a signal to a channel, usually switches, dials, uh, sticks, logical conditions, and the channel responds accordingly. Servos by moving left to right. Speed controllers by increasing or decreasing the motor revs and whatever else you can dream up as well. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.